The U.S. Forest Service has more than 80 long-term research sites nationwide, and this is one of those. It was established in 1950. What we're researching out here is silviculture, which is the art and science of managing forests for the outcomes that you want. And we're looking at a full suite of silvicultural treatments. So there's ones that create an even-aged forest condition, and there's others that create an uneven-aged forest condition. We're also looking at what we call exploitive harvests. And so by looking at that full range of different types of silvicultural treatments, as well as things that unfortunately are sometimes practiced in the working forest, we can look at the outcomes of them over many years and identify the pros and cons of each of those options. So this is a stand that was regenerated using even-aged management techniques where they left some big trees that acted as seed sources and shade for the regenerating stand and then removed those big trees once the regeneration was established. This stand has been both pre-commercially thinned and commercially thinned. And so what that means is they've come through and they've captured some of the intermediate value. So some of these balsam fir that might die early on are taken out. And that's what creates this open condition in here. In contrast, this stand was started at the same time but has never been pre-commercially thinned or commercially thinned. And you can see that when you look at it. You can't see very far, you can't walk very far in it. It does provide some good shelter for certain types of wildlife because it's, it's very dense and closed. But it also doesn't give you a lot of very merchantable products because you have a lot of really small trees. And if you were to go in and remove a bunch of the trees to create this open structure, you're gonna lose a lot of the remaining trees to blow down, and um, damage and things like that. So right now we're standing in an um, area of the forest that has been subjected to what we call exploitive harvesting. So when we started in the 1950s, this was a mature softwood dominated stand. So lots of big trees, spruce, hemlock were important species here. We came in for the purposes of research at that time, and we just cut everything that could be sold. And after the stand grew back in the 1980s, we did it again. To a large extent, the spruce and hemlock are now gone. So they are slow growing. They require a really kind of a moist seed bed in order to regenerate. And so they don't do very well in a large open area. The fir, however, is a much more competitive conifer in this region. It's faster growing. And so that has maintained a good representation here in the stand, but unfortunately, it has a short lifespan. So while the hemlock and the spruce can last 400 years or longer, these fir on these poorly drained sites tend to die at 70 to 80 years old. This is an uneven age system, so we have trees of many different ages in the, in the forest all at once. When we come in and harvest, we tend to harvest some of the mature trees, but we're also always harvesting the lower quality trees and the shorter lived species um, to try and favor, favor better trees. So we're harvesting trees in all the diameter classes, from the very big to the very small. If you're starting with a forest that's relatively even aged or maybe has two ages, or all the trees are the same, you can't turn it into this overnight, but through careful management over a long time, um, you can get it into this, into this condition. I think it's aesthetically beautiful. There's a lot going on here, but it's also a place that's produced timber for a long time. Remember, we have 20 species in the Acadian forest, and sure, we can let that come back. That's what nature would have done, right? But nature was starting with the full suite. When we're starting with these forests that have been heavily exploited in the past, or they might just be old field forests on your small landowners, right? A lot of that's old field vegetation, missing a lot of the pieces. Um, I'm unapologetic about the benefits of management, right? That's what silviculture is, is to give us, is to help us have the kind of forest that we want, whether that be for just aesthetic and hunting enjoyment, wild, watching wildlife, or to make some money, or ideally do both at the same time. 
The decisions we make in the forest today have really profound implications for what will be there in the future. And so whether you choose to do a type of silviculture or a type of exploitive harvesting, you're going to end up with a different condition, not just immediately after the harvest, but for many, many decades in the future.